wanted to do something a little different today. I'm going to actually do an on-stream review of a routine in GovX called uh, the Speed Routine. It's made by a group of people called Sparkies, um, which produce a lot of content for Kovacs in particular. So this is the aim training routines offered by Sparky Group. And the intent behind this is meant to help people that are at a certain level in their aim training with certain problems they might be having. Uh, for example, smoothness and precision, large angles, reactivity, speed, and they talk through the different techniques that you can use, why it works, and just the routine itself. So what I'm going to be doing is just following this verbatim and just talking through my thoughts as I'm running through it. And then at the end, I'll just provide a quick recap on how it worked for me, if it's uh, beneficial, things of that nature. So I need to change this to 130. And my FOV, my current sends is 1.47. So quick calculator, because I can't do that math in my head. Pop that in, hit save, and I've already got this uh, geared up. So the first thing I'm noticing as I'm doing this is uh, it's a lot easier to be precise. It's easier for me to keep my mouse on my target. It could be because these are more simple movement patterns. I am noticing that my hand feels a little tense, and I don't know if that's just normal tense, tenseness, is that a word? Tenacity? I don't know. Or if it's just due to the fact that the sense is so low now. The fact that these bots run into each other is a little annoying. And normally I don't have a problem keeping up with the bot movement when it's going in a straight line. But I'm finding right now that I'm being... Like my cursor is often too far behind the target. So now I feel like I'm overcompensating and then putting it too ahead of the target. I am noticing that I'm throwing my flex to flick back to the target when it changed direction a bit more aggressively than I would normally. And that's just because if I'm too light on the flicks with this new sense, it doesn't catch up with the bot. Normally I would do a lighter flick to get back to the bot and then not over flick. And I feel like I am now compensating for that and then over flicking. Well, I don't even know if you want to say over flicking because I have to flick it at that aggressively just to meet the bot so, not having done this before, I'm wondering if that's going to have detrimental effects when I go back to my regular sends. Once again, noticing that I'm too far ahead, or too far behind the bot, so now I'm trying to focus on getting ahead of the bot again. It's hard to tell if they're going to run into each other, or just pass each other like shifts in the night. This seems like a fairly straightforward scenario, and I feel like I'm going to have a hard time doing this particular scenario for any length of time. In my head, I'm wondering the value of it as a speed training scenario vice like a precision scenario. But again, I just kind of want to run this whole thing verbatim. I'm feeling kind of muscle movement that I'm not used to feeling, particularly in my wrist. So I don't know if part of this routine is intended to develop muscles that don't get developed a lot. Okay, my, my wrist is definitely starting to... To feel it. I'm gonna quickly stretch. Normally this is something that I do every time regardless. Uh, normally I want to warm up a little bit before I do them. It's not pain but I'm feeling uh, I want to say stiffness in my wrist. Oh well. I, I was feeling pretty good about that one but I think it helped that it was only one bot on the middle there. So that was interesting. Um, let's see the box. The so box is normally... oh wow has a lot of movement associated with it, so I'm actually curious. Normally there's like a big 180 scenario, and it still is. So this is definitely challenging. I'm having to use all the real estate on my pad right now. I'm still trying to quickly switch. Depending on how far away the bot is, it's making it much more difficult. Yeah, like my mouse was just on the very edges of my mouse pad there, like almost falling off my desk. That was tough. I had to lift a lot too, so I had to lift my mouse much more than I normally would. Yeah, one of the things I'm noticing is a lot of times I can't get over from target to target in one complete movement. I'm having to drag and lift and drag again. I'm trying to force myself to do it in one complete movement if possible though. 
I think one of the key things of this scenario, generically, even outside of speed training, is you want your mouse cursor to land directly on the bot when you flick to it, so there's minimized waste. I'm trying to focus on stable movements too, so that I have as much of a direct single line from target to target. So I'm actually getting close to my high score, <laughs> which is really surprising because my high score was set on my normal FOV and my normal sense. Actually, what I might do when I finish with the speed training, just as like baseline, is I might go back in and do this scenario at my normal FOV and my normal sense. My mouse is going nuts on this pad. I'm definitely shaky and I'm making roundabout decisions with getting from bot to bot, but I'm also wondering if that's just how I would be approaching it anyway if I wasn't at the sense and FOV. And I'm consciously trying to get from bot to bot without lifting my mouse as much as possible. I mean, it doesn't specify it in the guide, but I'm thinking that one of the biggest benefits you get from this is kind of forcing yourself to move that way. Now, I have the, the ability to look back a little bit since I did this yesterday, and I do remember being a lot more sore by this point, and I'm not this time, and it's only been a day of rest. So I'm wondering if part of this is, like I said before, developing those muscles and getting used to it. I do particularly feel pain in my hand, and I use the term pain lightly, in my palm. And I'm a, a fingertip grip. I'm a, a constantly on the edge of my pad like my frickin' mouse is about to fall off. It's funny because there's a large angles uh, routine, and I feel like this has a lot of large angles in it. All right, so I got through that. I have a feeling that I did this one yesterday again. Know that this is going to be the hardest one. I had a feeling it was going to be anyway yesterday, and I know it will be. And this is just at a 90 degree movement. Normally this is 180 degrees of movement that they have. I'm trying really hard not to tense my hand. You see, like, I'm definitely unstable, which is kind of unusual in some ways because the sense is so much smaller, and you have... A lot more stability in that regard but i think it has to do with the fact that i'm using different muscles than i'm used to using and i'm also in my head i'm thinking about how to get from target to target so i'm going to try to consciously detense that's what i'm doing right now can't think of a better word relax i guess my hand definitely having some trouble with some of the bots Dude, these bots are so hard to chase. Some of them are, are brutal. It's weird because I can kind of feel myself becoming accustomed to the sins. This is still a workout, I gotta say. My arm is, uh, particularly my forearm now, is starting to feel it. At first it was just kind of in my wrist and my palm. Now I'm definitely noticing more of the forearm on this one because of how much work I'm having to do to get to the bots that are particularly on the other side. So I'd be curious if somebody else has done a video like this and what their experience has been. Because part of me is now kind of coming to the conclusion that what the document creators intended was kind of to get that workout, to develop those muscles. Yeah, that is just a pleasant little byproduct. That was one of the first things I learned early on was that you should get a little bit of soreness. Like, it shouldn't hurt to the point where, like, if you have, like, repetitive stress, and I think that's just developing mouse feel. Okay, dare I say I'm, like, starting to feel comfortable with this sense? I ran this yesterday, and it felt uncomfortable the whole time. Not that I would adjust to the sense by any stretch of the imagination. The biggest risk I see with the speed training is over flicking. Once I go back to my regular. So that took me about 30 minutes. I did all 10 of them. Initial impressions, my wrist feel sore. <laughs> My wrist down to about mid forearm. It felt a little, I hate to say it, kind of bland. I think it's just because the scenarios, just rerunning the same scenarios over and over again, I've kind of gotten used to doing more of like a one by one um, type of training where you just run one of each and then you go through each of the scenarios one at a time and then you start back at the beginning. So doing 10 of each was a little hard for me to stomach. My thought is that once I go back to my regular sends, I feel like I'm going to be overshooting quite a lot. I think I'm going to notice the difference for sure, and I'm going to spend a little time adjusting back, obviously. But I'm kind of curious if it does improve my scores in the long run. It might.
prediction is that I am going to need to do this for probably a couple of weeks before I notice any long-term gains. I think just like with anything, short-term changes, it takes more than one or two days of doing something before you will notice any changes. That said, let me switch back to my normal sense and my normal FOV. Oh my god, I can already feel the difference with my mouse. Holy shit. I'm going to do a Vox target switch just to see what it feels like. But this one is the same scenario regardless, so I'm just going to go ahead and run it. Oh my god. I'm like, this is like madness. I am crazy over flicking. Okay. The closer bots are easier to flick to, which makes sense because they're closer to you. It's actually a wider angle. The further butts, I am super over flicking just initially. I'll predict maybe five to ten runs and I'll feel normal again. So I gotta say, when I'm going between target to target, my speed now is just insane. Like it's just a blur. And I'm used to my eyes being able to focus when I'm going target to target, and that's just not the case anymore. So and I'm, I'm kind of also noticing that I'm taking, I don't want to say bigger risks, but I'm taking angles with my wrist on my mouse pad that I normally wouldn't do. Okay, I'm already kind of getting back adjusted. I'm seeing that I'm landing more when I'm flicking over. I'm still over flicking quite a lot, but far less than I was immediately after changing my sense back. Yeah, I'm kind of capped right here. And I think it's partly because I'm still over flicking a shit ton. And I'm not focusing as hard on getting a PB, so I'm actually going to try to get a PB here. Okay, a little better. I think one of my weaknesses is definitely still the fact that um, I don't have stability when flicking to a target. But yeah, I'm either under or over flicking, and I'm not optimally killing the target in uh, a lot of time. Basically a lot of waste there. So I think the speed definitely helps. Um, I can feel like I'm getting to targets faster, but what I'm missing still is the consistent tracking on the target once I get there. So I need to be able to accurately flick to that target and stop right there, which I don't think has anything to do with speed. I don't necessarily think it has anything to do with precision. I'm actually kind of surprised that I did get that 64 uh, score and that my high is 69 because that's that's a plat score right that's a sparky plat score and I mean I did awful I'm trying to think of where types of scenarios that speed benefits the most from the things that come to mind really are clicking especially like wide walls I'm definitely overshooting but I'm still roughly around my my high score still definitely over flicking still imprecise I think that's my biggest problem with these scenarios in particular the speed isn't really going to help me there. One of the biggest things with aim improvement generically is to just be looking for continuous improvement. And by that I mean, what are your bottlenecks? You know, what are your current bottlenecks that are preventing you from getting better? Improvement has to be thoughtful and considered. You can't just keep practicing the same thing over and over again and expect the same results. One of the biggest habits I have that I need to fix is a lack of stability on a bot. Like I kind of move quickly back and forth on it. And I notice I do this when I'm playing Apex too. I just micro adjust way too much. So still <clears throat> real shaky on the, on the tracking scores. Um, and I think that's expected. I was kind of predicting that I would not, I mean, I'm below median on that. I mean, granted my high is not that great. So I think, I think to get higher scores on these type of scenarios, I need to practice precision. Because ultimately, I mean, you see this accuracy, 43%. Um, to even really begin to get good scores, your cursor has to be on the bot all the time, basically, as much as possible. So it's really two things. One, that's precision. The second is reactivity. Speed really doesn't play into the tracking. So I tried all three different types of scenarios. I tried some target switching, I tried some dots, and I tried some tracking. Target switching and dots were roughly around my high scores. The dots, for sure, was static dots. The least affected by doing the speed training. Target switching... They were roughly around my high, and Vox was, I mean, I got 64, and with my high being 69 on Bounce 180. Clicking, I did Wide Wall 6 T Reload, which I got roughly around my high on, and my tracking was the lowest. 
So my initial impressions are the speed training works. My thoughts are it needs a couple of weeks probably of doing it consistently every day to really see results. I'm guessing, I'm predicting that my biggest results are going to be in terms of improvements are going to be on clicking, uh, static dots specifically. Second will be switching. And my least improvement is going to be on the tracking side of the house. So next time, I think what I'll do is I'll do some fast tracking, like close, fast, trace, invisible or something, instead of something that requires smoothness and precision. I think there's going to be differences in what speed training benefits there are.